In this video I'm going to show you how to create a circuit in Fritzing. I'm uh, going to create a breadboard layout, a schematic diagram and then in a future video I'm going to turn this into a PCB as well. This is based around my Christmas house project that I made. I've only done that in breadboard so far so this will actually be creating the PCB eventually and to try and tidy it up because the breadboard's quite a messy thing with lots of wires. Uh, but I'm going to be going as though I'm starting this project from scratch and starting with the schematic and the breadboard design in this video. So as I said, I'm going to be using Fritzin for designing this circuit. So Fritzin's a nice, easy to use tool. It's got a few flaws. It's not the most powerful and you can end up making messy circuits through it. But if you follow this, then I'm going to try and make it quite neat. And there's a few other issues where the parts aren't available. I'm mainly going to be using core parts on this that are included in the program but I will be adding one other part which I've already uploaded but I'll include that in the description for this video so that you can use that. But I do think Fritzin has its place and it's particularly easy to use for somebody wanting to get started uh, before you move on to the more complicated tools such as KeyCAD. And so I'm going to be concentrating on two views here, the breadboard view and the schematic and I'm going to be switching between the two and doing it different ways because it shows you different ways you can design the circuit. First of all I'm just going to change this breadboard so by default it comes with a full plus and I'm going to change that to half plus which is the standard size breadboard that most people use and this is so based around my Christmas house which is a, a Raspberry Pi project I'm going to create this as a Raspberry Pi hat so the first component I'll put in the schematic diagram is going to be a Raspberry Pi and that's actually part of the core parts if you scroll down for computers there's a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, doesn't really matter which model as long as so the 2 plus all have the same pin out uh, from the two upwards, so two, three, four. And in fact, the, the Pi Zero does, but it has a different form factor. So there is a separate Pi Zero which can be used if you prefer that. And as you can see, it shows the Raspberry Pi as a single block and it shows the pins that are on there and the GPIO references. I'm going to start by creating some LEDs that are driven directly from the GPIO. So these are the, the most basic components you can do to create a circuit. We'll start with um, all in the core parts. There's an LED. And this one has come up as a red LED, which is the default which we'll start with and it also needs a current limiting resistor which I'm going to rotate 90 degrees when you rotate it, it rotates the label as well but I didn't want to rotate that so I'll rotate that back and this is going to connect to GPIO 24 uh, so we don't want lines crossing at horrible angles. When you're creating a schematic, then there's usually some guidelines that people follow. Usually, if you've got a positive voltage, that would be shown at the top. So we'll be showing connecting the five volt supply to things from the top. We'll also be adding a separate 20 volt power supply. And then the ground is usually at the bottom usually read left to right although that's not always the case and uh, if it makes sense to have things connected on this side then 
you do that. But generally, inputs would be on the left and outputs on the right on a on a schematic diagram where you can. And when you do lines, you normally do right angles, nice sharp corners. Just connect these up, and then that goes to ground. Which is there. One thing I will also put is a ground symbol. I think it's useful to make it clear that there's a ground there. Um, and this can be used if you don't want to run wires all across. You can add another ground symbol and it will be as though they're connected. And this is the, the basic part. I just realized the resistor has defaulted to 220 ohm. I'm going to use 330 ohm to reduce the current a bit more. Now, if we go to the breadboard view, um, you see what's happened is that the components have just been thrown on. Um, so we want, we normally want these on the breadboard, except in this case, the LEDs are not going to be on the breadboard because I'm going to want these mounted elsewhere inside the building. So I'm going to leave the LEDs off the breadboard and have wires connecting them and I'm going to put the resistor onto the breadboard. So if I, you have to make sure that you select these. So I'll, I'll explain about these wires in a short while. So first of all, let's just move this resistor around. So just as in one of the conventions on the schematic is to have the rails, the power separate. It's a, usually a good idea when you're creating the schematic to have the, the power separate. I see this is um, pin six on the Raspberry Pi is a ground connection. I'm going to start from there. So this is going to be our ground connection and then this entire line on the breadboard will be ground. I'll usually use black for ground. Now if we rotate this and if we place it so that it is over one of the pins on this bottom line then that should be connected and the dotted line has disappeared. These dotted lines are known as the rat's nest and they're created on the schematic. If you create components in this view, they'll be shown as rat's nests on the schematic and vice versa. I'm just gonna flip this around. And as you can see, we need the wire that goes from the Raspberry Pi to the LED. I'm going to make this red. Oh, should do it. More of a pink colour actually. Now, if you look, if I if I try and bend this, it, it bends at right angles. I, when I'm in the schematic view, I prefer the curly wires. Or curved wires and that's under the preferences under breadboard view you can turn curvy wires and legs there we go so it makes it a bit easier because you can move it around so that you can see the pins underneath it now I'm going to want to position this leg so it goes on there. Unfortunately, if I try and grab that and try and add a wire, I don't really want that. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to try changing the grid size so I can position this better. Um, Put a 
at 1.25 millimeters. So I've just set the grid space into a smaller size and that's allowed me to position that better. So I want it, when it goes on here, then it will light these up green, um, but it's not connected there, but that's okay. I can connect. Now connect from there to there. And then I can just connect to there. So that's the first part done on both the breadboard and the schematic view. So the alternative is you can add it through here. So what we'll do with I'll just duplicate this LED here. I'm going to change this to a white LED, which is going to represent a light inside the house. And this is going to need another resistor. Put the resistor there. And connect from here to there. And then this will go to, and I'm going to follow the GPIO pins of my previous design for this because then it's going to work with the same code. I'm not going to have to update the code. This should be GPIO 25, which is pin 22. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 2022 and now we can look at the schematic and you can see it pretty much as the reverse of when we did the breadboard the, the components have just been placed on and they need moving around a bit. I just realised. So we can just join those up. These up. And then that to that. And then just give it a nice angle. There we go and we'll carry on. So the next part I want to add is a NeoPixel or a RGB LED. It's not a standard one so I need to add some libraries for the Adafruit one. And I've just downloaded the Adafruit Fritzin libraries and there's an awful lot of them so I'm just going to import some of them into here. So there's quite a lot of the, there's a, an awful lot of um, ones you can use. Um, I'm going to use the breadboard one that doesn't have the through the hole one, which is what I'm really going to use. But the breadboard one provides what I need. And this is very similar to how it would be on the schematic anyway. So you've got the ground the plus supply voltage which should be 5 volt and input and an output. So I'm going to wind, wire the supply voltage up there. And 
times ground goes to ground. The input to the NeoPixel needs to be 5 volts, although you can sometimes get away with 3.3 .3 volts, which is what the output from the GPIO is, but really the proper way of doing this is through a, a level shifter. I'm going to use a MOSFET and under the core parts there is an NPN MOSFET, but it's not the right type for what we need. It shows as a P channel, but you can change it to an N channel. But this is designed for, it's easy to see on the breadboard, the TO220 package. It doesn't have the TO92, which is what I'm using, which is this one, which is a 2N7000 is the particular one I'm using. So I'll tell you how to get this in the description as well. So as it comes on, just put it on there, I'm just going to rotate it and wire that up. So add the bend point and I can connect to that. And if I use the shift key, you can straighten it up and make it look nice. This goes to the input and move the hole. And now I need a resistor, which is a pull up resistor, connects it to 5 volts. And that's going to be a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. So what this does is that when this is turned on, it pulls the input down to ground, sets it at zero volts, and when it's turned off, it opens this circuit here and then the input is connected to the 5 volts through this resistor here. So it inverts the signal, which is just a, a consequence of using uh, a single MOSFET. But um, we can deal with that with the software. So this needs to connect to GPIO at 18 through another resistor. So the MOSFETs actually have a very high impedance on the gate, which is what we're going into. So it wouldn't pull a large current, except one of the characteristics of a MOSFET is it's, it's got a capacitance and therefore when you first apply a voltage, it can pull a large current for a short period of time, could damage the, the Raspberry Pi. So that's why we put a current limiting resistor on here put it here but look a little bit tidy if I just put it over here because we're going to go to GPIO 18 the this pin here And this would be a 470 ohm resistor. Um, now, on a schematic diagram, 
whenever a line crosses another it doesn't mean they're electrically connected they're only electrically connected if there's a circle put on the junction but to make this look a little bit neater I'm going to just extend this line down here if I move this if I move each of these down This is one of the difficult things about working with Fritz and just getting it's it's very easy just to make a sloppy diagram. But if you do take a bit more time Now we can then bring this across here. So it does take quite a bit of time to keep this neat, but it's it's worth it when it makes the, the diagram easier to understand. So from GPIO 18, we go through this current limited resistor, this MOSFET, and to the NeoPixel. And again, back on here. Going to position this part way in. As I'm being as I'm going to put another MOSFET over here, um, and you need to position it so that the legs turn blue, and when they do, they're connected to these pins here. So this is the. gate here which is let's use a different color is blue here so this one connects to ground you can see from that black line there so we do that to there Second resistor. On there. Ah, looks like I've actually gone. Ah, that's correct. That's, so this is this is the plus voltage. It's like. I've missed a wire. So I'm going to put, so these are two are the 5 volt power supply. I'm going to put that to this rail here. And then I can connect that to that rail. To that rail as well. And then finally, you know, this black wire uh, goes to the ground. I use it to here. There we go. Um, now I did miss a wire by looks of it because there's nothing on the the data end. So the data end should be coming to here. So. Ah, 
so it looks like it's connected as you can see there's no dot there so that wasn't actually connected so that's why as a bend point there we go that's connected now so that's the next part done the breadboard so the next thing I wanted to do I'm going to just move that out of the way is we're going to add a, a smoke generator I'm going to put that here and there isn't a part for a smoke generator so this is a smoke generator for a, a model railway so I'm going to use a mystery part which is this one here it comes on with three pins but I'm going to change that to two pins and I'm going to flip it now I should do this on the breadboard so here's the part I'm just going to put it up here because again this isn't going to be mounted on the board this is going to be mounted off the board it's going to have we're going to use the same type of FET MOSFET on here, so we'll put that on there. Mm. And then this is going to go to that. And I'm going to use this second supply rail here as being our 20 volt supply rail to differentiate it from the 5 volt one here. I'm going to use these orange wires. I need a resistor here. It should be the same as the 470 ohm. This will go to ground. In fact, as it's associated with this one, I'm going to use this ground here. However, and then I'm going to connect this ground to there. So the, the two grounds for different supplies are connected together. It just makes clear that that one is for this is for the 20 volt supply whereas this one is for the 5 volt supply and then this needs to go to the next GPIO pin which I've used as pin GPIO 23 which is physical pin 16 see one of the, the challenges with this is the breadboard is starting to look quite messy and this is one of the reasons that I've decided to use this as a example of how you can make a printed circuit board it's actually made up of s several smaller like mini circuits if you like but there's lots to try and include on this one project so it, it is really an ideal one to make into a printed circuit board go back to the schematic and over here flip that one vertical so 
that the that pin goes there. That connects to the ground. There's a resistor here because I duplicated it, it's on top of the other one. And I'm going to bring this all the way down underneath here. Just to try and keep it neat. I could have tried to go. In fact, it would look better if I did that. Oops. That's that. That's a little better in there. It just keeps this this ground down here. Then connect. Oops. those and that's this string done I'm gonna lay that out better on the breadboard the LEDs have just been stacked onto of each other and I'm gonna go on the breadboard they're gonna be on here instead I'm just going to put them in order. So that I don't need to have the wires crossing. It's trying to move the legs, you need to try and get the right spot. It's one of these where when you want to move the legs you don't and when you do Ah, that's the positive end. Sheet, we'll take that and then move that. Okay. 
we're going to do this for the green LEDs, which are the other. What's we're going to do? Again, I've just shown a different way how you can create them using the breadboard view rather than the schematic view, whichever you choose, whichever works, whichever way works best for you. Usually I would start with the schematic first and then create the breadboard. Um, but sometimes, particularly when you start looking at digital circuits with lots of lines, it might be easy to look at how the integrated circuits can be aligned up to reduce the amount of crossing wires, things like that. Finally, the connection to here goes to that. And then move that away from there to the pin I'm going to use is GPO 17, which is pin 11. That should be the last of the components. I just need to rearrange this over here to match. So that's like one of them has been placed on here. Zoom in to try and pick the components out. So got them all in the, in the right sort of area, so I'll just line them up with using the rat's nest wires to help determine which ones goes where. And then just in case of joining the wires up.
they? And oh, one more. You can tell from the red ones when they're green, they're connected. When they're red, they're disconnected. We don't need that one. That's just if you want to chain on more near pixels. We don't need any of those. So there's the completed schematic, Oops. and there's the completed breadboard. So breadboard does look a bit messy, but that's the nature of the breadboard. Uh, it's uh, a lot of wires going around between the various parts. I'm going to leave that there on this video, show you the finished product and next video we'll be looking at how to turn that into a PCB. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So that you can see the next video on how you actually make a PCB, design it in Fritzing. We're going to take this circuit and put it onto a PCB, get it made and solder it up and hopefully we'll have a fully working circuit at the end of this.